university here, and we're going to make it, I said, the greatest, safest place, hopefully, in the entire country. And I just want to thank everybody. A lot of people did a lot of work. You know, the team, the coaches get credit, but there's so many people from the band, the cheerleaders, from all the employees that have done so much for us uh, throughout the year and beyond. And we just want to thank all of you, and hopefully you'll all feel a part of it. out here in the golf cart, VIP, you know what I'm saying, doing our photo shoots. It's a beautiful life we're living. Rock watch. Hold that smile. And we're going to count down six, five, four. What's up, everyone? We're here at Fan Fest, you know, out having a good time. Jack over there hitting some fingers. But uh, we're just having some fun with everyone on our team. It's a team where you can play against each other. told you I'm never satisfied because now truly you got to play for 40 minutes because somebody else this is going to be the most important thing in their life too.
My mom for game days will typically prep some type of meal for us, not only for the girls, it's more for the fans because by the time that we get off the court, the food is basically already gone. So she'll come early, set up the food, prep, and then you'll hear her in the stands rooting for us for every single match and every single point. I honestly, over the past few years, I feel like it's something that I've kind of, not taken for granted, but just kind of gotten used to it. And it didn't really hit me how impactful this is, like, and how amazing it is that I have the opportunity for my mother to come support me after everything that she's been through. My grandparents and my most of my immediate family was born in Vietnam, so my mother, Two aunts and my uncle were born there. Uh, my grandfather fought in the war for the South with America and um, they wanted to escape and that was obviously not a very easy process. It was one night out of nowhere. I was waking up in the middle of the, of the night and said that we're leaving. I have no idea what's going on. Obviously all this is under underground. Um, as the communist government does not support anybody leaving, you know, the country. So we were, it was me and my brother and my dad. Um, my dad just got out of prison from a prison, uh, from the communist camp. And all he knew is that he has to leave, he has to leave. We got on, onto a small wooden boat to go to a bigger boat. But it was a wooden, bigger wooden boat. It was a hundred and some odd people, all cramped up, literally like this. And we were adrift for three days uh, and two nights. And there was no water and you can't move because if you move, you lose your spot. Day one, baby, let's get it. Alright, let's go, let's go. Uh, what's up? Shoot, feeling great. Say, it's been a long time since we been playing football. Man, it's lifting. All this lifting, having me sore every single day. Man, I'm, it's good to be back though. Go bring it, let's get it. Every year, spring ball sort of starts the the, uh, the real new season. You know, you have different players, a lot of freshmen coming in. Uh, we've got seven new freshmen in. We've also got a lot of redshirt freshmen, so they have an opportunity to to start to sort of earn their wings a little bit and, and get involved more. It's about uh, reaffirming what we're doing, uh, changing different things, experimenting with different players, um, playing a little bit under duress and playing in spring games and in scrimmages and these type of things, and uh, and looking forward to the future. My grandfather, my mom, and my uncle came to, went to Thailand first, they landed there. And then they had to wait and wait and just, he would check every single day for the docks to see if like my grandmother would come. We were able to reunite in Thailand and then we came to the United States together as a family. When I started her, it was just through a park and rec and she was four and a half, a little bit younger than Victoria. And she kept on saying, you know, throw me some balls. I don't want to go home and throw balls after work. But she kept on nagging and nagging. And so we're here. I got some balls. I fed her in the driveway. And then the following spring, I got her a tennis coach. My mother really just liked how um, it could be played at all ages. She liked that you could play it when you're old, when you're young, in a wheelchair. She just liked how diverse it was. She had no experience with sports. None of my family had any experience with um, sports in that way. It was always about school. When she put me in, it was just for just give me some exercise, really. Help me venture out and try new things, really. And I had 
a lot of slack from my parents saying, why do I spend so much money on sports and so much time? But I encourage her with sports is because with sports, I can also teach her a lot of things in life that I can't always teach her in a book. She learns about discipline, priority. She learns about teamwork and making sacrifices. All that stuff, it's, it's all good in a book, but, it, it, but you can't really apply it. Um, and in tennis, you can learn everything in life through tennis. It's senior year for me and a lot of the other guys on this defense. Uh, we've been around the program for a couple of years now. We haven't had the success that we've, you know, hoped and dreamed to have. So we got one more shot to do it, and uh, you know we're trying to leave it all all out there uh, this spring. It's very important. I think um, this is kind of the time where we see some of the, the young guys step up and really prepare for their new role um, coming into um, fall camp later and obviously summer. But I think I think it's really good and just kind of to see who's who's going to be the one stepping up this year. You can't win a championship right now in the spring, but um, does it doesn't mean that you can't practice like a champion. You know you can't work in the weight room like a champion, meetings and everything like that. So. You kind of you start getting in the mode now for you know the fall. So when the fall happens and you're doing it live for real, you've already taken 100 reps of doing it how you're supposed to do it. So it makes it easier in the fall. Last year was last year. You know, what I'm saying this, this is a whole new team, a whole new group of guys, um, and so it's just about you know looking at the things. Although we did so many great things last year, it's about looking at the things that we didn't do well that we can do better, and really focusing on those and honing in, honing in on those aspects. Let's try to get everyone to work together, um, to be to become one full team and, and to work as one unit. And uh, I think on, on the offensive side of the ball, it takes a little bit um, of more communication, um, a little more of my guys calling people out um, when they're not doing the right thing and making sure the guys are competing at, at all times. It's all about being a Spartan dog. Um, that's kind of been our mentality since I've been here, um, and it goes way back. Uh, we don't let teams run the ball on us. That's our you know main goal as a defense every week, going into uh, game plans. And uh, you know if we can, you know, stop the run. Um, that's going to limit a lot of the explosive plays, and uh, it's going to carry us forward. Um, you know, throughout the game, it's going to help us in the passing game as well. We're going to get pressure on the quarterback. We're going to throw them all off because they can't run the ball. It only makes us better on the offensive side, uh, offensive side of the ball. Um, going up against them every day, um, competing against them, trying to make them better than what they were last year, and then obviously them trying to make us better than what we were last year. Um, I think it works very well for us. Oh, oh, good, good, good. Good, don't gather, good, don't gather. There's a lot that goes into this from winter workouts to strength training uh, to uh, even academics and balancing their academic schedule and then uh, to going out on a football field in spring practice and basically learning a technique or a way to do something in a system of coverages or fronts or, or plays. You're trying to create some type of pressures on our football team that would sort of enhance their play and, and parallel that with, with maybe game day in the fall. Another beauty of a morning in Yangzhou, China. Here's our race course and our practice course. Down there you can see all the buoys, that's where the course heads. Nice uh, carnival, carnival across, <laughs> the, across the river. Here's the brand new boathouse that we've been working with. They gave us all of our equipment and ordered our new blades. It's called Deep Dive. Yeah, Deep Dive. Bright and early. It's 5.45 a.m. Woo! <laughs> Sophia and I actually rode together in high school. It's kind of crazy that from high school to Michigan State to, you know, World University Championships rowing for the U.S., um, we're together the whole time. In the fall last year, we went to U.S. Rowing ID Camp, where they kind of identify, like, who are good rowers out of the bunch. And after that, we got invited to um, be a part of the World University Championships team. We just really like worked together for things that we were nervous about. We went to practice knowing we were going to work for each other, if nothing else. Smile. So uncomfortable. Smile. 
<laughs> Especially at the beginning where everything's so new and people are from all over the place. Um, it was really good to have something familiar and someone familiar to talk to. I was extremely happy to have Megan there with me the whole time, like going in there, knowing someone and being able to talk to her when I was stressed out or nervous about something. Um, it made it a lot easier and we kept saying throughout the summer like things happen for a reason We're definitely here together, and it's like the best experience it could be The night before the opening ceremony my coach knocked on uh, mine and Sophia's door said I would be the flag bearer and I couldn't believe that but I was really excited Here we are at the opening ceremony The next day at the ceremony, I was given this huge American flag, and at the beginning of the ceremony, they announced all the countries, and I walked across the stage with the American flag. So it was really awesome. United States of America. When I was carrying the flag across the stage, my all of my team, so all the Americans were just shouting, everyone's so excited, and that was probably the coolest part. They said the United States and everyone's clapping and excited, and that was just, that was really awesome. Being there with the USA on our unis and a totally different experience and representing something so much bigger than us and a team that was amazing to train with all summer, it was definitely life-changing and it makes me excited to do it and continue it more. We both share the common goal of, I mean, we wanted to row for a national team at some point and this is a stepping stone to getting to the senior team, U23 team. Ultimately, the senior team is the Olympic level, so it's of course the goal. <laughs> Anytime they put a USA colors on, it's just, I know what they feel. You just see them stand a little taller, you see them stand a little prouder, and it's, it's fun for me to watch as a coach, because you, you get to see that development, and, and hopefully they can continue and find different levels to, to compete for the U.S. Checking in, Team USA. We got third place, third in the world. Bronze medals, baby. Woo! For a ragtag team that came together, we all met each other besides Sophia and I on June 2nd. We went up against uh, the U23 national teams and we still came together and got third in the world. So that's pretty awesome. Hardest race of our lives. Yeah, we don't remember most of it. We gave 110% and here we are, third in the world. Yeah. <laughs> oh God. I'm gonna cry. <laughs> It means so much, like, I realized that I wouldn't be anywhere without her, like, without her support, I would just crumble under pressure, and like, but I have that strong role model to look for, and the fact that she's so invested um, in my success and the enjoyment of my life and playing tennis and stuff, it, it means a lot, like, it's not only my hard work that paid off, you know, it's hers, like, she put in those hours too. To see her, you know, mature and understand and learn the game and get better, um, it's just extremely rewarding. Um, and for her to be here at State and contributing um, is something beyond my wild my wildest dreams. My mother was always the main source of light in my life. Like she pushed me in everything that I did in terms of academics in terms of school, in terms of just developing into a strong woman. I spent a lot of time with her, so like my father wasn't really around at that time. It was always my mother, so she took me everywhere, like from babysitting to school to picking me up for practice, whatever it was, whether it was tennis or soccer or piano lessons or whatever. And looking back, what I remember most is her unrelenting effort to give us the best life that we can. To be honest, if I wasn't here, I don't know what I would be doing in Vietnam. My dad say I'd probably be a seamstress. 
because that's all that we could do. Or be in the meat market and learn my, my mom's trade, which is she's butchered and sold meat. So that's probably what I would be able to do. I tell her about it and I told her never to ever take anything for granted because what I have to go through to get here and then when, when we get here, my parents didn't know any English. They didn't know how to help me to get through school. I was able to have to fight all through all that on my own. And telling her that she has no excuses whatsoever to not be able to make it here with all the resources that, that she has. Um, you know, with what I can give her, with what the university can give her, there's just no excuses why she should not excel in whatever she does. Her support is unwavering in every aspect. Like she, there's a lot of been a lot of times where she's been sick, not feeling well. The roads were terrible. Snow was coming down, but that's never stopped her from wanting to come support myself and this team. I do it because I, I I enjoy I want I enjoy watching tennis. I enjoy watching the girl play. Um, all the girls compete here. Uh, and we have such a great program here and it's, we're building and I just want to be a part of it.